On November 19th of the college, I was in the library walking up the stairs, and all of a sudden I told this girl I wasn't feeling well, and I passed out, and then I went to cardiac arrest for around 40 minutes. My staff called me to let me know that we had someone coming in who was very young, who had been down for a very long time, and I volunteered to come in to serve as a resource and to assist the staff in implementing the hypothermia protocol as quickly as possible for him. They just said he had been down already for, I, I think it was like 16 minutes. Uh, the EMS uh, that called us, or one of the students in the library, I forget who picked up the phone, but they didn't think he was going to make it, informed us that it's a long time and, you know, wasn't sure what was going to happen. And, to, you know, he was 19, that was one thing that he had going for him. And starting, he did explain to us that they started the, the cooling therapy and if, if anything that was going to you know, save his brain. If someone has a cardiac arrest and they meet the criteria, American Heart Association recommends that we cool them for a period of 24 hours and then we rewarm them slowly over the next 24 hours. All of this is done to prevent or minimize the devastating neurological effects that can happen after someone experiences cardiac arrest. When he gave the thumbs up that he could hear them, and we knew then, okay, there's, you know, some cognitive, because he heard the nurse say, you know, Stephen, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up, and, and he did, and they were so ecstatic. It was hard, but somehow, little by little, every day, something came back to me. Sometimes I just think about it, and I can't believe he's still here uh, after he's, what he's gone through. We implemented the process or the protocol in 2006 and we have treated 43 patients since then. Stephen was our 42nd patient and all hyperthermia patients that are treated here at MUSC receive a unique multidisciplinary approach. Uh, cardiology, pulmonology and neurointensivists all see these patients and work together as a team to ensure that we have the best outcomes. They refer to me as Miracle Kid because most people don't survive after six minutes, I think it is, have any brain functions, so, I mean, in fact, I've done this twice now. Can't, can't hit. I mean, I'm just lucky. This really is what we signed up for. Uh, when we all, you know, sit back and say, hey, I want to be a doctor, I think a story like Stevens is, is exemplary of, of why, and it, it's reinforced when we see him months later smiling and talking. I volunteer on the cardiology floor downstairs, and um, I just answer the call bell and walk patients down when they're discharged. And I want to become a cardiologist, coincidentally, and it was before all this happened. So, yeah. So, I, hopefully, I'll be in Dr. Steinberg's position one day. We're just so pleased that he's willing to come back and see us and to even volunteer at MUSC and give something back to the patients and to the staff. He gives us hope and reason to continue this protocol and that it really does work and it really does make a difference in people's lives.